Now, Dr. Turton, a very good afternoon to you. So you are talking about sewage surveillance as a means of which to track down cases of COVID-19. Please explain. Yes, good afternoon to you and the listeners. Um, it's a well-known fact that uh, people that are infected with uh, COVID-19 uh, shed, shed virus in their feces and urine. This has been well established in various peer-reviewed literature. So it is quite typically possible to monitor that in incoming sewage into sewage works. And this has now been done by the Dutch, uh, a research institute called KWR in the Netherlands. Uh, and it's also been done by Americans and, in fact, in other parts of the, of the world as we speak now. So the, the, the sewage uh, uh, is really uh, nothing more than a sampling point for a large population of known size. And the beauty of this is that we can sample it on a regular basis and we can monitor the changes in the total viral load, uh, say, say, on a daily basis or on a weekly basis. And that can tell us if society is getting a heavier load or a lighter load. In other words, whether a peak is coming our way or whether we are moving away from a peak. And Dr. Turton, so as you rightfully explain, what these stool and urine samples would help do is look at the viral load of a specific area. But what are the implications for the need for rapid individual testing? Would we first have to do what you are suggesting and then based on what is found from the samples, send in teams to test the individuals in a set location? Okay, there are, there are many different ways of testing. Uh, so we have the, the one option is to do individual testing. And let's just say we've got 55 million people in South Africa. So are we going to do 55 million tests? What, what is the logistical requirement of that? Remembering that when a person gets tested, uh, they have to go to a laboratory. And literally, once they walk out of the laboratory, they can be reinfected within a few minutes. So in other words, individual testing is useful but it only tells us about an individual person at a particular moment in time. Now, the opposite is true with sewage surveillance, because sewage surveillance will never tell us about an individual, but it will tell us about a total population within a given defined catchment area, and it will tell us whether that population has got a, a growing viral load or a, or a lessening viral load. Now, that's very important because the, one of the big numbers that's missing at the moment in, in the total surveillance is the total number of people infected. We only know of the people that are infected that are then sent for testing. We don't know the, of the people that are asymptomatic that are infected, not showing any symptoms, but are not yet sent for testing. So, so this has got the potential for filling in that very, very important gap. And the important thing is that this technology or this methodology can be rolled out very, very quickly across the country, uh, far quicker than individual testing will ever be rolled out. Let me ask you then, Dr. Turton, because this, as you referenced earlier, is a method that's been used in the Netherlands. When you look at the South African context, we have a great many people who don't have, sadly, flushing toilets and that sort of system. Would it be adaptable to save pit latrines? Well, a, a pit latrine would not work because it's not connected to the central sewage system. However, wherever we have a, a, a population connected to a central sewage system, that would work. We have 824 sewage works across the country. All of those sewage works service, I would estimate, something like 80% of the population. So maybe, maybe you don't sample 100% of the population, but you can at least sample, for example, your, your, your hotspot areas. So all of your, your city centres, uh, Durban, Port Elizabeth, East London, Cape Town, Johannesburg, Pretoria, these are all known hotspot areas now. And in a very short period of time, you can roll that technology out into those spaces and you can at least monitor whether the hotspot is getting hotter or whether the hotspot is cooling down. Dr. Anthony Turton of the University of the Free State, great speaking to you, sir. Thank you.